Hi everyone. Today I will be discussing about uh, my project, which is the PCA extraction using PCA and current PCA for face recognition. In this project, I will be discussing about uh, these two algorithms, uh, which is the linear PCA and the nonlinear algorithm, which is the current PCA, and uh, show how these can be used for facial recognition, and also discuss the different parameters which affect the performance of these algorithms. These are the main contents of my presentation. First, I'll give an introduction to the facial recognition systems. Then I'll talk about uh, the PCA or the principal component analysis. Then I'll talk about its nonlinear version, which is the kernel PCA. Then I'll discuss about the ORL database, which is the database used for measuring, uh, comparing the performance of these uh, above to mentioned algorithms. Then I'll discuss about the simulation and results, and finally conclude my presentation. A facial recognition system is an application or you can say a computer application which automatically detects uh, a person from uh, a given image based on the database uh, on which it is trained. So it has two important steps, which is the feature extraction step and the classification step. The feature extraction step is also known as uh, the, the dimensionality re reduction step. Instead of uh, uh, comparing the entire image for facial recognition, we only extract the most dominant features or the most important features of the image which are known as the principal components and use them for the comparison uh, for testing a new image or uh, an unknown image. In the classification step, uh, given an unknown image, it is classified as one among the uh, images uh, present in the database and thus used for I identification. The principal component analysis is a mathematical procedure which uh, tries to decorrelate uh, the information and extract the uncorrelated uh, variables known as the principal components. It has two important steps. First is to train the recognizer, and uh, the second step is recognition of an unknown face. In the training uh, uh, phase, uh, each image present in the database is represented by a rectangular matrix of dimension m by n. This matrix is converted to a column matrix of m n by one dimension. Thus, for each image present in the database, we get one column vector. But all these features have some common features. To calculate the common features of all the images, we calculate the mean of these co uh, n column vectors. And we subtract this mean from all these uh, column vectors to get the normalized vectors, which have the unique features of each image present in the database, or which is used for the training of the algorithm. Thus, each uh, uh, normalized vector is represented by x, and, and thus uh, we calculate the autocorrelation function of this x matrix, which is x into x transpose and we calculate the uh, eigenvectors of this uh, autocorrelation matrix. Thus, for an image of dimension m by n, we get mn eigenvectors. But all these features, uh, uh, if we use all these uh, mn uh, dimensions for the comparison, then that increases the time, uh, computation time for uh, the algorithm. Thus, we extract only the k-dominant features of this uh, among these k uh, mn eigenvectors and use them for as uh, principal components for com recognizing an unknown image. After uh, extracting the k-dominant eigenvectors, we calculate the projection of uh, the uh, entire in training set on uh, on these eigenvectors and calculate the weight vectors for each image in the database. In the recognition phase, when an unknown image is given, it is first converted to a face vector that is a uh, mn by one a column vector of dimension mn by one, and then it is normalized by subtracting the previously calculated mean from this vector. In the next phase. We calculate the projection of this image onto the k selected eigenvectors and compute the weight vector for this given input image. Then we calculate the distance of this weight vector with the weight vector cal calculated in the previous step of each input image in, uh, in the training set and calculate the mean distance between them. So if the minimum distance is less than certain threshold, we uh, if the minimum is not greater less than certain threshold, we will categorize this image as an unknown person and thus it is not recognized. And if the distance is less than the given minimum threshold, we, uh, we can classify this image as recognized and compare uh, uh, that with the... Uh, and we can declare that as the image which to which it has the least distance in the training set. The current PCA is a nonlinear form version of the PCA, which involves uh, mapping of the linear uh, vectors onto a higher dimensional space known as the kernel, uh, kernel Hilbert space through a nonlinear mapping. This, uh, this phi uh, represents uh, the mapping uh, the, the function of mapping the from the linear space to the feature space. Uh, we actually do not uh, di uh, calculate the feature feature vector for each input vector. Instead, we use the kernel trick 
where uh, the dot product of two vectors in the feature space is represented by a kernel function. Thus, to calculate the covariance matrix, we instead of uh, calculating the feature vector of each image and by calculating the uh, dot product among the, uh, those two vectors, we use the kernel trick and thus uh, calculate the eigenvectors of the k matrix and uh, extract the principal components in the case of kernel PCA. In this project, two different uh, pol uh, kernel functions have been used. The first is uh, the pol polynomial kernel. Uh, where uh, which is represented as like k of x comma y is equal to x transpose y plus n whole power p. p of p is the degree of the polynomial kernel which actually uh, controls the performance of the uh, polynomial kernel PCA. And the second is the Gaussian kernel where uh, it is uh, defined as uh, k of x comma y is equal to exponential of x minus y uh, normal uh, second norm of x comma y divided by 2 sigma square. Here sigma square is known as the width of the Gaussian kernel which actually uh, controls the performance of uh, the Gaussian kernel PCA. Uh, for the testing of these two algorithms, the ORL database of faces is used. This contains of 400 gray images which correspond to 40 different subjects. Uh, for each subject, 10 different images of different uh, light intensities uh, with different facial features and also different orientations of the faces are collected and they are used for uh, training and also testing the, uh, uh, testing the algorithm. Uh, for training the algorithm, we can use uh, any number of images, but based on the number of training samples, the performance of uh, the algorithm varies. And also, uh, the performance depends upon the number of uh, feature vectors, that is the k um, uh, dominant eigenvectors, uh, uh, which, uh, which determine the performance of these algorithms. Coming to the simulation and results, this uh, uh, first graph shows the variation of the success rate with the number of training images in the case of PCA. It can be seen that as the number of uh, training images is increased from 1 to 9, uh, the success rate uh, increases. As more and more images are used, so uh, a better performance, a uh, better uh, recognition system is built. This shows uh, the variation of the success rate with the threshold. The threshold compare, uh, refers to the number of uh, eigenvectors which are uh, considered for uh, feature facial recognition, that is, uh, the comparison of the images uh, on an image with the uh, training images in the training set. Thus it can be seen that as uh, the number of features are increased, uh, so the success rate also increases. This shows uh, the variation of the success rate uh, with the number of images of uh, and different thresholds. It can be seen that as the number of images the performance increases and also as the threshold increases the performance also increases. And this fourth graph uh, represents uh, the variation of the success rate uh, with the threshold uh, for different training sets uh, in the case of PCA. And uh, as previously uh, we have discussed that as the th threshold or the number of uh, vectors, uh, uh, like the principal components as they are increased and uh, uh, the performance increases and also as the number of uh, 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 training samples are increased, the performance also increases. Uh, this graph shows the variation of the success rate of uh, the Gaussian function with the uh, width of the Gaussian uh, kernel. Uh, that is the, the sigma square component which actually controls the performance of the Gaussian function. So it can be seen as the width increases, so initially the success rate increases, but uh, after a uh, certain reaching certain threshold, uh, the performance almost remains the same, uh, even though the Gaussian function width is increased. Uh, this shows the variation of uh, the uh, success rate uh, of the polynomial kernel PCA with uh, the degree of the polynomial algorithm, uh, polynomial kernel. It can be seen that as uh, the degree is increased from 2 to 6, the performance uh, gradually uh, like uh, decreases drastically. Thus, uh, the polynomial kernel of uh, degree 2 gives the best performance among the kernel PCAs. This shows the variation of the success rate uh, with the number of training sets for different thresholds in the case of Gaussian kernel PCA. Previously, we have seen the uh, performance in the case of the linear PCA, and this shows the performance of a Gaussian kernel PCA. But as it can be seen as uh, uh, that as the number of training sets are increased and as the number as the threshold increases, the performance of the algorithm increases. And uh, this shows the variation of the success rate uh, in the case of the polynomial kernel PCA. Uh, even uh, for this, we uh, can see, see that as the number of images are increased and as the threshold is increased, the performance of uh, the algorithm increases. Just to conclude the presentation, it can be seen that. Uh, uh, from uh, as the number of uh, for the small number of training images that is from 0 to 5 
the PC outperforms the polynomial uh, uh, kernel PC and also the Gaussian kernel PC. That is, the linear PC is uh, the most efficient and uh, the most simplest of the algorithms. And for images, uh, when the training images are more than five, and um, both the algorithms give almost similar performance. And uh, in the case of uh, polynomial kernel PC, we have seen that the uh, polynomial uh, PC of the degree two gives the best performance compared to uh, higher degrees. And also in the case of Gaussian width, uh, in the case of Gaussian kernel PC, uh, for small values of uh, Gaussian width, uh, the performance increases. But uh, after uh, we have reached the threshold, even though we increase the Gaussian width, uh, the performance almost remains the same. Now we'll see about some simulations. This is the MATLAB code I have written for uh, for, uh, for the linear PCA. And this is the algorithm for polynomial kernel PCA. And this is the algorithm I have written for Gaussian kernel PCA. I run the algorithm for uh, linear PC and it takes some time for uh, computation. Uh, the kernel PC uh, takes even uh, longer time for execution. Uh, so this is the graph which is uh, which shows the relationship of successful with the number of training images. So I have run only for one threshold, uh, the and, uh, because uh, for more number of thresholds it takes a much longer time. So it can be seen that as the number of uh, training images are uh, increased, uh, the success rate gradually increases. Thus, uh, finally, it, uh, uh, the PCA, the linear PCA, is the simplest of the algorithms, and it has the best efficiency compared to any linear or non-linear methods. Thank you.